Welcome to the Museum of Flight in Seattle. For decades, the Apollo 11 Command Module has been on display at the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. But this summer, it's in the other Washington. This historic spacecraft that carried the first Americans to the moon is celebrating its 50th anniversary. The Apollo missions weren't just about landing on the moon. They were about proving who we are as Americans and what we're capable of. And this is an iconic symbol of that power. You're coming down the ladder now. I'm uh, at the foot of the ladder. The lamb footbeds are only uh, uh, depressed in the surface about uh, one or two inches. I'm going to step off the lamb now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Many years ago, the great British explorer George Mallory, who was to die on Mount Everest, was asked why did he want to climb it. He said because it is there. Well, space is there. And we're going to climb it. And the moon and the planets are there. And new hopes for knowledge and peace are there. And therefore, as we set sail, we ask God's blessing on the most hazardous and dangerous and greatest adventure on which man has ever embarked. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. When President Kennedy made this challenge, Alan Shepard had taken a 15-minute flight to suborbit. That, that was the extent of our technology and our ability. We didn't have really anything as far as the technology or the plan to go to the moon, and this, so they had to start from scratch. So I think it really is a great example, a great lesson in leadership. A very simple goal after that, that everyone was committed to. Man, moon, decade. And simplifying it, galvanizing that, it made it happen. Wow, this, this is what an objective. We, we have yet to get one man even into orbit, and this guy's talking about going to the moon, and I thought that was pretty remarkable. I had the uh, opportunity to be uh, flight controller at NASA during Apollo. I was actually the EMU flight controller during Apollo 11, so when Neil and Buzz walked on the moon, very exciting time. I uh, ended up going to the University of Washington, had the opportunity to work at uh, University of Washington wind tunnel and uh, all of us were talking about airplanes or space and I, I was hooked on space so every time there is a space flight we would leave the wind tunnel and go over to the hub and watch it on TV and uh, the wind tunnel would come to a screeching halt. My first one was Apollo 9 where it was an Earth orbit mission Saturn V the big one and it had a lunar module command module and my backpacks on there and it was going to be the first time that we uh, actually they were docked and we used all the communication. Going to the moon took a massive national effort. 400,000 people worked on the program across the country, along with thousands of companies and universities. It took five of these F-1 engines to lift the 6.2 million pound Saturn V rocket into space. This is the largest rocket engine ever built, but it took more than power to get to the moon. It took ingenuity too. Boeing had a significant role, but probably the biggest role in the Apollo Saturn program of, of any corporation. This was huge. 20,000 corporations teamed up to do this across America. And really, this was something that was so big for NASA that they didn't have the skills or the background to do something that big. But Boeing did. Boeing made sure all the parts from across the country, came together at the Cape. Boeing integrated the vehicle, tested it, 
evaluated it, made sure it was ready for flight. And that partnership allowed NASA to focus on the mission and make all of Apollo so successful. Going into the Moker for Apollo 11, when they opened that door and I said, I'm the man on the console for those two astronauts' lives, that, uh, that hit me. I felt so lucky that I could be part of that. Of all the engineers around there, people smarter than me, they, they could have been in that slot. And it just, I felt like it's a question of having the right education and being in the right place at the right time and things will come together. And we're doing the one positive thing, something has never done before and uh, uh, incredible, and, and all the number of people watching it. I think it, it brought not just the United States, but the world together as a peaceful venture. We walked out Mr. Control and in typical wonderful evening sky in Houston, we, you know, we saw the moon. Several of us, you know, we walked, we kind of look at the moon and says, they're really there and we really did it. The system worked. It was phenomenal. All six missions, all 12 packs worked wonderfully during Apollo. In that famous speech at Rice University, he said, we choose to go to the moon not because it is easy, but because it is hard. In talking about it, he often talked about sacrifice. And one of the things that's very important to remember is we did not go to the moon because it was popular. We went because it was important. It was a symbol of what America could accomplish if we put the effort in and if we made the necessary sacrifices and we committed ourselves to going there. One of the very important things to remember about Apollo is that we're feeling the effects of the legacy of the moon landing today. Uh, one of the great things about missions of discovery is that the greatest benefits are often things that you don't see ahead of time. And if you look at the, that great Earthrise image from Apollo 8, one of the astronauts said, it's almost like we had to go to the moon to discover ourselves. In undertaking these endeavors, it's the things that we don't know we'll learn that have the most value. Looking at this Apollo capsule right now, it, it brings back so many memories. I was nine years old when I watched those fuzzy black and white images of Neil Armstrong making that first step, and it was, it, it changed changed me and it, it, it set my life in a direction. Right then at that moment, I had decided I was gonna be an astronaut. And it's probably good for NASA that that didn't happen, but here I am after, at the end of a career, near an end of a career in the aerospace industry, that this inspired me, and it still does, This, but this entire industry, we do things that other people think are too hard or impossible, and we do that every day. And to be a part of that, to be with those people, the people that did this, to work with those kind of people has been an incredible honor. And I hope, and I know, that Apollo and what Boeing and others are doing today to return to space will inspire that next generation of young people the way I was inspired. So what did we learn by going to the moon? Well, countless innovations in science and technology that really laid the groundwork for what's going on today, our push to explore well beyond the moon. But more than that, Apollo showed the world who we are as Americans and that for a brief moment in time, it's possible for the entire world to come together. <laughs>